the definition of success, okay? Making money and growing my little ones. That's, that's basically money and family. You know, it's always going to be a balance. In other words, but for me, in order for you to, to, to focus on the very tippy top of the pyramid, okay, and here's a, I'll throw the pyramid up there. I can't really be working on the tippy top of the pyramid if I got to worry about, you know, things at the bottom of the pyramid. Maslow himself said, you are not moving up a level until the, the current level is taken care of. So you don't get to go up to love and belonging and all those needs uh, without safety and security. So, and, I, and I'm thinking for the elevated group, these are people that are looking for, you know, belongingness. And, and I think we all have a big need for that because we belong to the CSA. I have heard a lot of you people in the CSA, and I say it myself, that we are closer with our CSA group than we are our own family. True or false, you're closer to your own CSA, see people to CSA, you can admit more stuff to them. It's easier to admit more stuff to them, real sh than you can your own family. And I know that's true, because your own family, they will judge your ass. And the, and the people in our group, by and large, we do not judge each other. We're actually there to help each other up. So Micah says, success is not necessarily working less. It's when everything I'm doing has a purpose. And, and, and that's huge. And it's almost like, I'm going to say the younger you are, the more closer to being a millennial you are, the more you care about having a greater purpose. But I will tell you, my purpose when I was young, 25, was to make money. That was it. Now my purpose is totally shifted, but it's only shifted because I got the money. I can't sit here and honestly tell you if I didn't have enough money to retire comfortably, that I could be all that concerned with self-actualization at the top of the pyramid. I'm just being honest here. But because I checked off most of the boxes, I can start working on other, other boxes I haven't checked off yet. Jason says success is balanced between the personal, family, and work life while having the money to live and retire. Well, on a scale from one to 10, just how, just how hard is that? To balance your personal, your family, and your work life. That's like a 10 out of 10. I, I remember in college, and the same thing happens, you have, you know, you had your, your academic life, which is now your work life. You have your social life, okay, which was, partying in college and now your social life is you know having some sort of interaction with other people on this planet and you have your family life your actual family and i remember only ever at best having two out of three working for me never having three for three going on strong it was the hardest goddamn thing to get all the facets in my life going in this in the same direction so that is a 10 out of 10 to get that thing working, but that's what we're striving for. And that's what we'll, we'll talk about. That's the sort of the conversation, the places I'd like to go is figure out how do you make a boatload of money and run a damn business? I mean, one that you could check out for a month and it runs itself and you get back to, okay? How do you spend meaningful time with your family and not miss your kids growing up or all the other things that, that family Brings. And at the same time, by the way, save enough money so one day the family will be gone. At least they'll be moved out of your house. Your business will be sold or you won't be working anymore because you'll, you're just done with that phase of your life. And you actually have enough money to then kind of pick and choose what direction. What do you, what do you want to do? How do you want to grow? How do you want to go further in in this thing that we're all calling life. So he says, uh, having a calm, steady flow in life. I've been doing a lot of reading about flow, but I think I understand what you're saying. You'd just like everything to be nice and easy, no problems even keeled. And that 
unfortunately just not the way life is, man. Life, it's like either daily or weekly or monthly, it throws you curves. And you got to deal with these things. And, and just the only thing we can really understand and in reading, I'm just doing a bunch of internal exploration on mindfulness and all this kind of stuff. Just understand that, that you've always heard the expression, the only thing that, uh, uh, the only certainty in life is that things are going to change. You just got to accept these monkey wrenches life throws at you. Take them for what they are, not create that bullshit story in your head that Tom and I were talking about easier and just look at the problems and the things in life for exactly how they are and not the story we're building them up to be. It says reaching freedom day without a worry in the world. Yeah, I don't know that there'll ever be no worries in the world. You you know, even those, a lot of people that are, they're free to do whatever they want. In other words, money makes you free because you don't have to work for money anymore. A lot of these sons of the most unhappiest people you ever want to read about or you've met. You've probably met some, you know, people that seemingly have it all together, but boy, they are certainly unhappy. So money, trust me, money's not the answer. I think for me, the answer seems to be, you know, they, they, they talk about the, the very tippy top pyramid. And it's, it's the people that want to grow and want to learn and want to be creative and spontaneous. They want all these fantastic experiences. You know, it's almost like, you know, and I have this, it, it, I have this thing. I always wish I could start first grade all over again. Anybody, anybody ever had that kind of wish? Like you could go back and do school again. I mean, when we do first grade, 10th grade, college, our heads are up our asses, man. We we are not in a position to really be learning anything because we don't want to we don't want to learn anything. And I wish if I could go back um to, to learn all that stuff again because I'm learning about when you read listen to a podcast about the real history and how shit really happened and or go look, watch uh, any of Ken Burns documentaries. I just finished one about the prohibition. Oh my God, that's so fascinating, it's unbelievable. So I don't know about you, but I wish I could go back and start all over again from first grade right on, because I would read every single thing, I would pay attention. And, and let me ask you a question. And I don't know what kind of student you were, I sucked. I was a C plus student. You know, and I cheated my ass off like half our school did as much as I needed to, to, to make life easy for myself. But what would be your GPA in, in grade school, high school, and college if you could go do it all over again right now? What would be your GPA? I would get a 4.0. I know it. Maybe there's some stuff that would come along in college that I just couldn't couldn't understand, comprehend. But most of the shit you learn through high school is pretty damn easy, you know. So I would like to have all that wisdom and all that knowledge and all that. Particularly, there's two types of knowledge you learn. One is just it's fun to have in your head and the other is useful knowledge, stuff that you actually get to use in your lifetime. And I realize most of what we learn in, in school, we don't actually get to get get to use. But uh, this part of the very tip of the pyramid and all this is what we do in this group. I mean, we we read stuff, we listen to podcasts, you go to webinars, you hang out in a Facebook group with other people, you call other people, you talk with them. I mean, we're all just learning off the backs of each other in this group. So, Sean graduated at 1.7, so 3.0 would be a. I didn't know you could graduate with a 1.7. But Sean, to make you feel good, buddy, just so you know, my first semester in college, 0. 0.6. That's three D, uh, three Fs, one D, and one C. And I cheated to get that C. Trust me. So I asked a question in our group, by the way, where you thought you were in this pyramid, and I, and I was quite honestly pleasantly surprised. Everybody, most people were said 
They are somewhere in the self-esteem, which also was called ego, and self-actualization. But I think we all belong to this group and we join this group because we want belongingness and we want to have, you know, the friendship and the and the connections from within this group because we're going through this, this stuff together to figure out the whole next level of shit. So, uh, nonetheless. So, what is your relationship with failure and success? And can you predict it? In other words, when you go into a situation, do you tell yourself, yeah, I'll go do this, but it ain't going to work out. Not in my favor. I don't see this thing happening the way I want it to happen. In other words, you actually believe that you're going to fail at it. Or conversely, you actually think no matter what you go into, that you're going to kill it. You're going to win. In fact, failure is not an option for you. Which one are you? When you go into any endeavor that you do, whether it's the sales we're talking about, whether it's, you know, dancing or, 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 or anything in life, do you feel like up front that you, you are just going to knock it out of the park? Or do you have some relationship with failure and you go in there questioning yourself before you even get in there. 